Is this fucking thing working? All right, I'm Craig and this is the Diary of an Angry Scottish Golfer. This is a weekly YouTube video series that I do, just tracks my progress, trying to get better at golf, trying to get down to a scratch handicap. If you're new to the channel and you like golf videos, golf vloggy, things like this, please consider subscribing because once I get to a thousand subscribers, I can monetize the channel and all money that is raised will go to rescue dog charity called All Spain Rescue Dogs. So basically, if you subscribe, you're donating to a good cause. You can see in the background, I'm at a different golf course today because the travel restrictions have been lifted. I'm at Elmwood Golf Course slash range slash lots of things up in Fife. I'm a bit, a bit nervous actually, if I'm being perfectly honest, because I'm, I'm up here for a performance session with a former European Tour Pro, Peter Whiteford, who played on the European Tour for about 10 years. He played in, I believe, 199 European tour events, so it's quite a lot. So like this guy's a proper player. And um, so the way this is gonna work is basically because this is like a lesson and you guys listen to me every week. There's not really a lot of value in you hearing me, I don't think. So I'm gonna use the little microphone that I've got on. I'm gonna put that on Peter so you'll get the information from him. So you might not hear that much from me, but we're not, I'm doing the introduction here so you don't have to deal with like an awkward introduction with the both of us, so yeah. We'll just play golf now. You can hit whatever you like. I'm just hitting two iron just because I'm, I'm old and I'm not warmed up yet. It's a, basically it's going to be about a two iron, seven iron, depending on how far you hit it. <coughs> it's not a far hole, it's not a long hole, it's only 370. So see the, the steeple on top of the hill? In the middle of the hill, sorry? Yes. That's kind of... Is it straight up the way? My bad. No. If ever there was a chance to just get a loosener driver, this is the one, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see what you got. First hole, straight at the motor, you'll probably duff it, don't worry about it. Well. Oh, I definitely will duff it. Oh boy. Cracker. Good at this. Straight down the head, I think. Oh, I can join you. So when you say you get angry, right? But look, I, I, learned, I learned a little bit late in my career, but I did learn eventually that and I was the angriest man on the planet, but if you, if I was angry at something, I would, I, it's okay to get angry if you just hit a bad swing. Because yeah. you're not a machine, you're gonna have a couple of bad swings, right? Yeah. So now you can accept them. The ones you can't accept, or I can still can't accept, is when I'm mentally not ready to hit a shot. So whether I don't think it's the right club, whether I'm not sure about the wind, or I'm thinking about my dinner, something like that. If I'm not fully committed to the shot and hit a bad one, absolutely, you're welcome to snap a club. <laughs> But until that's the case, um, you know, if you've got fear of consequence of the shot and you hit a bad shot through that, yes, that's, you can get angry at that because you can control that. Yeah. Strike. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, there'll be down slope, perfect. Righty tighty. See what you got. Bit pacey. You don't know the greens though, you don't know the greens. Okay. First hole, you didn't know the pace of the greens, we'll let you off. Right, see, so I would say the left bunker's still in play, you could probably carry the one on the right. I've not seen you hit a driver, but I've seen your iron swing. Beauty. Steady. Steady. It's a deep bar. Am I going to have to try and hit it hard to keep up with you? No, we scored me fade. Low runner, hopefully. Not low. Nah. Got 140. Try and work it towards the flag. There's times and places where I wouldn't say I work it towards every flag. Like, I'm different now because my body's all dead and my hands take over, but in general, when I was playing, I was a fader of the ball. So obviously right-hand flags were, regardless of the number, I'd be going at them. But left-hand flags, 
unless it was a nice number. So I could, I could draw it if I'm hitting it hard. I wasn't good at the soft draw. So I'd go for a left-hand flag if it was, for example, one, if my nine angle is 145 and it's a 150 left flag, I could hit the nine to that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for the 140 to the left flag. So I'd just ignore it slightly. Which sounds very, very pathetic, but you've got to play to your strengths, haven't you? Yeah, play to your strengths. You wait for, you'll wait for a better opportunity. Used to be. <laughs> the fact my voice went up there tells you it's not anymore. Been a couple of times recently, brutally bad. Knock it in, see what you got from that range. Lovely. Very good. <laughs> now I've got a slightly longer hole, so we'll test you out here. I think it's a par five, I don't really know what to play it as. Par four, par five, it's, it's reachable. Right, I'll get my drivel out of the way and let you crack on so I can concentrate what you're doing. Oh, old man hips, get on with it. Don't actually know what's over there. Never been there before. <laughs> no, you could probably just you you'd probably get you you'll reach them. Yeah, you'll get just in between them. They're 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 good bunkers. They're pretty much bang on for. Right now, stay, stay. Should be all right. Should be past it in a bit. Good. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I've been around my home track in 10, 11, I suppose, but not. Um, no, my tournament golf courses, I guess, 62s. 62, 63. Shooting, shooting, 62, 63 with these type of shots. Where the hell are we? I'm not even worried about this. That looks like it's just going to bury. I'll just come up and see your shot. So 202. You don't want to go long. But it's a big green. It looks like you've got about at least 10, maybe eight behind it. 210 to go long. So what you got? Four. Be amazed if it reaches. Maybe. No. A nine out of ten shot. Sure yeah. yeah, ten out of ten. Yeah. But, but it was, but it was brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be nice, but no, no, me. you just hit a four iron to the moon um, when it's going to land soft anyway, because we're into the wind and the greens are relatively soft. You're not that ready, and. Um, and you've no control of that, of the height at all. Yeah, you've come up 20 yards short, or you? It's bounced five, 10 yards short, that bunk, five yards short of the bunker. So that's a good 10, 10 yards, 15 yards out. But it was a pure shot, so it's not, nothing against the golf swing, just wrong shot, wasn't it? It's not even reached the bunker, look. Although. At least I haven't short sided no? You've not actually. Well, See, this is where people misunderstand short siding. And you know I was talking about not missing the green to a certain side or I wouldn't take on certain flags. Yeah. Short siding's only short sided when you're above it, really. When it's rolling away from you. Or you've, you're chipping in, in, up the hill here. So that's not short sided. I mean, you should be walking up here thinking this is an eight out of 10 already. Short side is a little bit misunderstood, I always feel. But I mean, over your camera is short siding yourself here because you're chipping downwind downhill. You're still chipping into the wind with a backboard if it goes wrong. Granted, you're chipping on a down slope. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Good dot. Nicely played hole. A good drive, good second shot. Good chip, good putt. The game looks great. You're getting top well, obviously. One, three, nine. Give me your club, what you're hitting. What, gr what ground's hard? What ground's hard? The greens? Like around the green, I feel like it's a bit hard. No, no, bounce on. Why would you be bouncing it on? What, you got a wedge? Yeah. Where do you want to bounce it like? Short of the green? No, so what I'm thinking is, this goes 130 yards, but my nine iron goes about 150, maybe give or take, like maybe like 145. So I think like I'm closer with a hard 130 shot to a 139. Yeah. Than a, than a... Yeah, so that's fine. Okay, you carry on. I'll just see what you do. It's 139, off your flop. Well, 
the last hole was off the right, if anything, the second shot, wasn't it? Which means this is, if anything, straight across. So that's partly the reason. Right, 139, then seven, one, two. Oh, come on, man. Awful, but it's been high, I suppose. I mean, one, you got the wind wrong, which is all right, you can get the wind wrong. But it seems like you got the wind wrong because you weren't concentrating, but that's fine. Um, it's 139, but it's playing down. It's got to be, a, what, I guess, seven down. So it's down 132 in it. So, like, you're good enough if you want to, you know, they, the difference between a one handicapper and a scratch handicapper is small margins, isn't it? Yeah. The smaller margins, the better you get at the game. So, I'm just saying it was a 132 shot with the wind off the left. You just hit it up in the air. I didn't have any penetration. I mean, I've hit a brutal golf shot and I'm closer, which is a bit embarrassing considering how bad it was. But a snap big well wedge. I'm just saying you just need to take numbers in the think them out a bit more, that's all. Nothing wrong with your golf swing. The lack of brain so far. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was upset and you're pacing the, stro pacing the putt out. What you got? Just call it 50 because it doesn't really matter. Just saying it matters in the putting green, but it didn't matter with your yardage. Just saying. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Yeah, great pup. Yeah, I mean, I've only seen you for five, six holes, or whatever hole we're on, you know. Um, but you look like the type of guy that if we played a Trackman tournament, you'd destroy me. But I'd be happy taking you on in the golf course. Does that make sense? So you put a little bit of uphill, downhill, a bit of wind, a bit of this, that and the other, then you're sort of robotic. Like, so far, no. don't know what you're always like, no, I would agree. It just kind of looks like you're just aim, swing. Straight down wind, it's only going to be three wood wedge anyway. Oh, good God, man. Better. Very good. Yeah, no, it's green side, I don't think we'll get that. Very good. If you're hooking it more on the course than you are in the, in the practice, uh, sorry, in the practice ground, you are aiming for a hook. And I know it's all very good. You've got to play with what you've got in the day, but again, you're just going to make it more and more and more, aren't you? You've got to maybe fight it just a tiny little bit, just to stop it from getting too much. Past your driver. Just in case you're wondering, past. You got me by 40 that hole, I wasn't happy. You yeah. Just to get the yips from the driver, it's really the club I can hit. Right. Down two from there. I mean, just high tariff what you're trying, that's all. I mean, it should be bounce miles short, shouldn't it? You've flown that five yards past the flag. Maybe 10 high, maybe just past the flag. 10 high. So unless you're Phil Mickelson, you ain't stopping it within 20 feet. It's just a dunt and run. That's just where I would just get rid of the laser. I bet you if I gave you that shot without any number, you'd hit it closer. Are you going to hit it to the back of the green? No. <laughs> you just turned what, after a class drive, into a very hard par. Good speed. Yeah, it's very nice. Good. Did that away. But do you know what, looking back on it now, would you not just see a wee bump and run up the hill? If you, if I gave you a ball and threw it up there, you would have bounced it short. Granted, you're not spinning a throw, but I'm just saying you're moving tight, Harry. But it's just using your brain again, like it's 55 yards. Uphill, hitting to quite a hard surface, I suppose. They're not, they're not, they're not that firm, but downwind, you're not going to, you certainly ain't going to, at best, you're going to get a little bit of tiny check in it from that distance downwind. So really, if you're trying to land it five yards short, I would say that's that's pretty high tariff. I would have to really try and nip the tits off the ball to make it stop five, bouncing, you know, five short. Yeah. If you played it as if the bunker was there, like right on the front edge, and it wasn't. And if it did, if it was, then your shot was right. But it wasn't. Everyone gets nervous. I tell you what's worse is when, well, right at the end, when I knew I was kind of, body was rubbish anyway, but I didn't get nervous. Then you just know it's time to give up.
Yeah, well, for me, no nerves basically meant I didn't think I was going to win or a chance of winning. This is by the time I dropped by even but I challenged him. So, no nerves is just a waste of time. I actually like getting nervous. You, you learn how to deal with it at times, but, and I'm not, I wasn't obviously, there's guys that are miles better dealing with nerves than I am, but it's just like anything, you get used to it. The more you do something, the more you, the more you get more comfortable in your surroundings. Isn't it? For me, I'd be focused into, in hard into one thing I'm physically trying to achieve. So if, you have, if you're trying to achieve something, you're not trying to not achieve something. You're not worried about the consequences. So um, it would be, if I'm really trying to, I don't know. Well, for mine, just try to get my elbows on the board. Yeah, if you're solely focused in on that, the consequence is pointless, isn't it? So you can just go ahead and... I don't, I'm not saying you want tons of swing thoughts, but you want... An, I think you play your best golf when you've got at least one trigger, one, one swing thought. I think once you get three or four, you're struggling a wee bit. And when you, I just I can't stand the phrase, oh, I just think fade and it fades, or think draw. I mean, please don't tell me you do that. Yeah. Yeah, like fine now. Yeah, what I mean is you're at a stage in the golf swing where if you really focus in on that, it's gonna be a hit of good shots. So when you're talking about a a trigger, you've got one. What I want to add is a little bit of shots into it rather than just hitting the blunge or you can still have a trigger and still work a left or righter though. Or still work a low one or work a high one, yeah, can't you? Even if you're trying to concentrate on yeah. Your elbow in there, do you think? Uh -huh. Doesn't have to change the whole shebang. Change a bit of it. So without even getting your laser out, this one surely you must be walking over thinking I need to hit it high and soft. What is that? What are you talking about? There's lucky cat in the bunker. Ah, uh, settle, petal. Well, my plan for yours would have been either the higher soft one or the low spinning it left to right. Well, if I was going for the low one, I would want loft to so I could knock it down and still spin it, so it would be 58. You don't hit them all with the same. I do, I pretty much am a one, one club man, but unless I have to, but I just seen, I'd seen using the contours of the green to get it round. So if you were kind of going and just hoping you hit the perfect shot. I eh, don't worry about that. Your putting looks all right. It's not something I'm really going to chastise that much. It's just a get it and play hole. You can actually drive the green if you really leave. It's actually a good shot for you, the driver. But let's see what you like with these anyway. What you got? And then. And, uh, that's all right. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't know. To be honest. Um, that was all right. It's good. Do you quite often get over a ball and not feel comfy? Yeah. You know how you hear the phrase of people saying oh, they played within themselves, and I don't know. Fury, he always seems to play within himself. All that type chat. Um, I'm more convinced that a lot of that is to do with they play the shot that they're comfortable over the ball playing. So, look, I'm predominantly a fader of the ball. Or should be. Um, but sometimes I just feel draw over the ball. And it might be the wind, it might be the stance, it might be something. Something will make me feel draw. I'll just feel like a draw. And I'll hit the draw. So that's the, you know, the times you have to work, you have to work it the other way. You have to do this, that, and the other bit. If, if you feel comfy doing a certain thing over the ball, so what I'm saying is you can incorporate that into your pre-shot routine. So like, if that's my ball there, for example, you walk up to it, and your first thing is you just sort of, how does it feel, and then go back and do your pre-shot routine and off you flop. Does that make sense? Because at least that way you're, you kinda, you're going into the shot knowing how it feels already, rather than being the first time you're at the ball. Because it's all very good looking at it from back here, and again, it's a different perspective again, isn't it? Because you're 90 degrees on as opposed to... I would do the same with every, you know, when I'm putting. I'm not, this is just me, I'm not saying this is for everyone, but I would do the same as I'm putting, like, um, I would remark it and sort of feel like over there, you know, let's say it feels two balls right, and then I go back there, and all my, all my reading is either to justify or to question my, my, my feel. So why you want to pitch it? You're a numbers type guy. You want to release in 10, yeah? So you're pitching it just to the right. 10 yard shot. 
Golf shot. Nice, no, good. Well played. That does. Little shy. I think you start seeing tour averages and stuff on telly, on, on all these stats. You realise people think, you know, when you're watching the golf on telly, like you were saying about you thought all oh, the scratch golf was flushed it. Once you start watching the featured groups, you realise that there's bad shots in there, you know what I mean? All you're doing on telly is watching the top of the leaderboard playing the best eh? Yeah, so if I, was to, if I was to read a putt, I'd be more on the lines of, you know, if I was trying, I'd be, get, get the ball. That'd be my first thing there. That barely, I don't see anything in it, right? So then I'd come back here and try and see if that's right or wrong, that it feels about right to left. So all this in fast forward mode, then I'd be up here kind of feeling, uh, doesn't really feel like it's breaking right to left here anymore, so yeah, it's not much in that. I'd say right edge, if anything. That makes sense? I'm going to start it up, I can never know. It's probably pretty straight, and I'll make my final decision sometimes when I'm over the ball. No, I'm not happy. So, no, no, no line. But I would say, in general, I mean, I'm happy now with the read that I've got, but um, yeah, it's a lot more feel orientated. And then you realise it was straight. So after all that, you made your mind up over the ball? After all that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you've, you've got to make it you. So there's no point in, there's no point in me being the way you are, no point in you being the way I am. You've got, you, you've got to, again, I'm more feel orientated, but you know, in the you know, you see the, you know, you get certain guys that talk about putting up a trough rather than up a burnt line. So therefore you're under less pressure than if you were to hit it down like a wee teeny little skinny line. Yeah. Right, so there's guys that think like that, so you put up a trough, so you're under less pressure to make sure that's, because at the end of the day, the ball's what, four times the size of the ball, uh, the hole's four times the size of the ball, isn't it? It's just mental cheats, isn't it? So if you're putting from here, you can obviously go in that line there to hole it, right? Or you can, or you can go the big high line, and that, that one you got to hit soft. Does that make sense? So, but what I'm saying is then, which is kind of halfway down the last hole. That's why I don't like telling people where I'm aiming half the time because I'll maybe go over it and just not feel comfy with that one that's right edge. So I'll just go fucking ball it side right and dolly it. So whatever when you feel, it goes back to feeling comfortable, isn't it? I, I don't like getting to fall because that's why no, that's why I don't like straight putts because there is no option. Do you know what I mean? So you can always change your, in golf, you can always change the shot you've hit, apart, the shot you're about to hit, apart from one or two occasions. Where you're kind of scunnered into, there's, a, there's trees off the tee, I can't start at left, or... You've always got options, haven't you? You know the ball goes further down, right? Yeah, still in bounds. Holy shit, this is offline! Oh, go! I'm tired, it's a long day for a woman like me. That's a golf shot. If you say 9-iron, we're walking in. That one's got practice written on it. Where have you been stealing them? 